and welcome to see you at USC. Today I'm here with director, producer, and actress Zane Busby. It's all coming up next on See You at USC, the best college talk show on television. Hello and welcome back to See You at USC. I'm your host, Lara Berman, and today I'm here with director, producer, and actress Zane Busby. Thanks for being with us. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Now, I'm so excited to have you here today because we have a bunch to talk about, but let's start. You're very involved with something called the Survivor Mitzvah Project. So just to start off, can you tell us what that's about? That is a project that uh, was born to help Holocaust survivors who have no other means of support people mm -hmm. in Eastern Europe, people actually all over the world who are in their 80s and 90s and have no money for food, shelter, heat, medications. Wow. And so that's why this project happened. And I'm a, I'm a comedy television director by trade. I do sitcoms and I've done hundreds of sitcoms and just fell into this other world by total accident, just by having a hiatus break from a show and going, to, oh, I think I'll see the places where my grandparents came from. Wow. And I happened upon this situation and seeing these people, these elderly people and living in backwoods in Eastern Europe in small huts, digging up potatoes and, it, you know, the governments have just left them with no pensions. You know, the collapse of the Soviet Union has just made these people destitute and mm. hopeless. Now, this is a subject that I'm also very passionate about. I'm yes. third generation. My grandparents were Holocaust survivors. And I think it's wonderful that you're doing this. But I have to tell you, most people, when they go on vacation from Hollywood, they don't expect to end up in the shuttles of Europe. What made but, you decide? <laughs> well, I, you know, I wanted to go. So everyone goes, oh, we're going to do our last show. Let's go to Hawaii. So, right. you know, That's get my ticket to likely. Hawaii. I do that every year. And right. then, um, this time I thought, you know, if I don't go now, you know, I, I heard it was changing. I heard that, you know, with the collapse of the Soviet Union, things were changing, old buildings and old things. And the way it was wasn't going to be around like that any longer. And I said, you know, this point in time sometimes a point in time is very important right you just go and see it something you know? spoke to you yeah something spoke, then that's the way my whole life is something always tells me to do something and i mm. just go for it so something spoke to me and i said okay who wants to go to eastern europe and i couldn't get one person i knew to go with me they all mm. thought i was out of my mind i said yeah well we'll see you we'll, we'll be on a beach in maui so, <laughs> so i went by myself mm. and i when i got over there i found out that the towns that i wanted to see of course weren't where i thought they were anymore they were behind the iron curtain they were in Belarus. So I thought, oh, I had to get a, a visa to go. In. And I had some days waiting for this visa in Vilnius, Lithuania. And when I was there, I saw, I met this guy who's a professor, David Katz, is brilliant and funny and wonderful. Right. And he had gone into Eastern Europe for many years studying Yiddish dialects and other dialects and actually filmed elderly people in their native surroundings. And, it, and Vil Vilnius, for people right. who don't know, that was a thriving yes. center of Yiddish culture and right. theater. The, so. For over a thousand years, right. it was the place where all the brainy guys went and women, and they had singers and dancers and it's it, writers, poets. Very rich. Rich culture, right, exactly. that was entirely wiped out by the Lithuanians. Uh, I think 96% of the Jewish population was murdered by the Lithuanians mm -hmm. before the Nazis got there, just, you know, to show you how anti-Semitic that place is. So there I was, and I saw some of this film he had shot, and I went, what? And it looked like film that was shot in the 1920s. Hmm. And I said, when did you shoot this? And he said, in 2000. I said, whoa. He says, well, you're going to see exactly what, you know. What about what it made like. it seem like it was from another time? Well, I'll tell you, I, my, the minute I crossed the border, it was from another time. You cross the border from a, you know, a place that's like Paris, and you cross the border, and suddenly there's no cars, there's only horses, mm. and you know, old you know, buggy-type things. Uh, people are barefoot. There's no stores. I mean, you know, we, didn't, we didn't prepare for this. You know, so I was with a guide because I don't speak any of these languages, and uh, we just didn't know. And you know, we said, oh, gee, we're hungry. <laughs> well, we went into a store. They, they sold corn and flashlights. I mean, there's like nothing there. Wow. There are no goods there. Everyone young, capable, able has long gone. And these are just and apple orchards apple orchards everywhere apple mm. orchards just left fallow and i said what's the deal with the apples well before world war one belarus was the apple you know exporter of the, of the world and who knew was, yeah who knew right? <laughs> and the war decimated that too so i was there i was in these little backwoods and this guy david katz had said here's eight names i want you to go visit these people it's on your way if you wouldn't mind could you just visit them and i said sure you know of course 
said, they're very, very old, and they're Holocaust survivors, and they haven't had any visits. And I said, great. And he says, oh, and if you wouldn't mind, could you go to the grocery store and buy some, uh, you know, yogurt and some candy and some cakes and stuff and take it with you? And I said, I wouldn't mind. He says, oh, and if you wouldn't mind, could you <laughs> go to the bank? And could you get some uh, your dollar bills and $10 bills and $20 bills and hand them out as well? I said, no, I wouldn't mind. He says, oh, and if you wouldn't mind, could, oh, you, yeah, could you get books and this and that? So I ended up with medicines and all this stuff, and I went into Belarus. And then it was really like going back in time 100, 200 years. And this is where your family was from? Yes, yes. Okay. At the time, part of it was Lithuania, but yes, Belarus, Lithuania. That's where my two grandmothers were from. So you met these people, you walked into their homes, and they welcomed you? Well, no, I, we would knock on these little huts, you know, just like we see old pictures of shtetls with the crooked buildings. This is what this looks like still to this day. And you go in these buildings, and you, you go up to the door, and knock, 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 nothing, nothing, nothing. So well, what, what's with this? I mean, no one's home ever. <laughs> you have to go around back, and there you see like a 97-year-old hoeing their potatoes up from the ground. This is in September, you know, August, September, because they had to get them out before the ground freezes, because that's all they live on. Wow. And I thought, 97 years old, hoeing potatoes. And this happened again and again and again. Everyone was out trying to get their potatoes out of the ground. So like, you know, we were talking to them, and you know, what happened to you, and this and that. And, and they, they have no one and nothing. And it was like they live on potatoes. I said, well, what's wrong with this picture, you know? Wow. But they told me some of their life stories and the mm -hmm. adventures of their escapes and all this stuff. And everything was like a movie. And I just couldn't get these people out of my mind when I came back to the land of comedy and was directing at Paramount going, Wow, but what about those people who, you know, it's now it's winter and I'm reading that Belarus is really cold this winter. What's going to happen to them? Who's caring for them, you know? You know, that's really interesting because in our celebrity obsessed culture, <laughs> yes. we hear about people going to Africa, going and doing their community service, and then they come back to Hollywood and they resume their normal right. lives. What about this was different for you? What made you decide that you needed to make this an ongoing part of your life? Because I, I think it's because... The, this is a generation that I call the unlucky generation. This generation spoke to me because if you think of a person who's 97 years old, and, th and they were born before World War I, so as, as little children, they experienced World War I. They survived that. They were subject to the famines of the 1920s, which swept through all of Eastern Europe, and a lot of people came to the United States at that time. They survived that. Then they were subject to the rise of Nazism. They survived that. Then it was the Holocaust, and you know their families decimated, their parents and children and brothers and sisters killed before their eyes. They were tortured and sent to prison camps, all kinds of horrible things. They survived that. Boom. Iron Curtain comes down. Mm. Stalin. Right? Oh, I'm sorry. Now you have to go to a prison camp for another 18 years. You know, So they survived the Gulag. Then they survived that. Then, gee, Paris, uh, I mean, Chernobyl comes. You know, if they're in the Ukraine, they have cancer, they have this, that, that. They survived that. Perestroika. Everyone says, oh, perestroika, isn't it wonderful? The East is, you know, I always thought it was a good thing, right? I didn't know that perestroika came, and suddenly all the bank accounts of all the people were taken, and suddenly everyone was left with nothing. Their pensions were taken. The infrastructures of the countries collapsed. I didn't know any of this. Yeah. So literally, there was, like, nobody dealing with this problem. And I really do believe in the power of one, that if you see a problem you, you, and you can identify it, that you are capable of fixing it. Hmm. So I said, well, no one's doing this. I looked around the web. I looked this. I said, no one is dealing with this. Okay, I'll do it. Wow. Well, you know, as you explain it, I nod my head, but there's no way I could ever imagine, and I hope I never have to. Right.